be praying. Out of Abraham. Oh, dear Lord, say, tell Abraham who the chosen people will be. Yes, the truth. Right. Which come out of who's seed? Very good. Out of uh, captivity, out of Egypt, we broke that covenant. 
And so we got to begin to learn now to keep these commandments out here. I mean, that's the whole deal. Keep these commandments. All right? We're talking about from uh, the high holy day laws, right? The civil laws, statute of commandments. All right? We're talking about the uh, dietary laws, statute of commandments. Right? We're talking about the moral laws, statutes and commandments, neighborly laws, statutes and commandments. We're talking about the whole deal. All right? And that's, that's where we're at today, to return back. Part of the redeeming uh, aspect of the Mashiaki Haushai is for us to begin to keep these commandments. See? Your Haushai is going to redeem us, but there is a condition with that. You've got to keep it. You got to keep the covenant. You got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and so that's where it's at. So let's start with uh, covenant. Covenant means an agreement or contract. Yeah. That's what it means. It means a commitment, a guarantee, a pledge, a promise, a bond. That's what it means. And as you can see in the history, the Most High made covenants with the nation of Israel. He made covenants with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then he made covenants the whole nation, right? We started with the forefathers first, then when we came out of Egypt as a nation, he made the, the covenant uh, with Israel as a whole nation. Mm -hmm. Understand? So, uh, maybe he made a covenant with Noah. Alright? What was the covenant with Noah? The rainbow? Yeah. Okay. Covenant. What was the covenant with Abraham? No. With Abraham. The earth. Or no. The circumcision. Remember? Oh. Right. All right. Covenant of circumcision, and also he made he gave Abraham the promise. Okay. He gave Abraham the promise that, of course, the land of Canaan would be ours, would be the nation of Israel. All right. He made that promise with Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. These are agreements. Huh? These are covenants that he made with our people. Right. And then, of course, when we uh, came out under Moses out of Egypt. Of course, the main covenant was for us to keep those laws, that's the commandments that Moses was teaching us in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And when we broke, we broke. We broke. Okay. So that's why we had to uh, suffer. So that's what a covenant is. So we're going to start in the New Testament, as always. I always start in the, um, I mean, we're going to start in the Old Testament. Right, right. And then, as always, it leads us into the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see how covenant. The word covenant and the word testament are like one and the same. It's just that when you get to the New Testament or the Gospels, it's called testament. In the Old Testament, it's called covenant. Right. All right. They're really one and the same. Mm -hmm. All right. They're really one and the same. All right. Uh, let's start with Exodus 24 and 1. So I try to I try to go from the Old Testament and lead to the New to show you how the uh, New Testament establishes the Old Testament. All right, and uh, Yahweh Shai didn't do away with anything from the Old Testament. That's very important for you to understand. Very important. All right, because the Christian church would try to tell you otherwise. But Exodus 24 and 1 teaches us about uh, the Book of the Covenant and what Moses did. All right. 24 and 1, and brothers, of course, would have to read out there for me. All right. And, uh, okay, Shania, let's start with you, Shania. And let's read loud, okay. And, and, and brothers, remember, sisters, also, take your notes, get your pen. Because <laughs> this, is, this is important, there's a lot of scriptures. Pen, uh, your notepad, write it down. Of course, you have your scriptures. Right. And I'm also... Um, no, I'm not going to read your seats. But you can write everything down, okay? So that when you go home tonight, you can also look it up yourself. Right. Right? And study yourself. Right. Get the, and get the understanding. Then the Yahweh Shai will deal with you, all right, in the spirit. When you're home meditating on the scriptures, Yahweh Shai deals with you there, yeah. all right? As you meditate. All right, so Exodus 24 and 1, Shunya. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 1. He said unto Moses, Come up unto the Most High, thou, and Aaron, the dog, and Abihu, and 
70, 70 of the elders of Israel. And where should be afar off? Right. So here go Moses. The Most High is telling Moses, Come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron and Dab and the Behu. Of course, of course these are uh, Levite priests that the Most High is establishing. All right. Uh, and these are the leaders. It said 70 of the elders of Israel. Of course, Moses had to establish 70 elders that was on close to his level of officership and, of course, humbleness uh, to lead the people. Because remember, he was trying to do it by himself. He was going to wear himself out. So it was uh, Jethro, his father-in-law, told him, man, what are you doing? You can't deal with all these people's problems by yourself. You're going to million some odd people. And you try and deal with each one individually, their problems and issues, and you're going to wear yourself out. So he said, the, the men who are the leaders of the camps, and the elders of each of those camps and families and so forth, uh, get those men to help you. So then Moses said, I will, once he did that, established that, he said, I deal with the severe issues, and those men would deal with the lighter issues. All right? So therefore, it took a lot of burden off of Moses. All right? But he still had a heavy burden on him. Even though it took a little bit off him, but he still had a heavy burden. Understand? That was a big job. So, guess what? We're going to go back through that in these last days. In the wilderness. You think, you think these brothers that have come out of America, and when we go into the wilderness, you know how many issues they're going to have? And problems? Brothers, you're going to have faggots, and lesbians, you're going to have everything out there. You're going to have niggas complaining about how they want to go back to America. They're going to problem their wives, they're going to problem their husbands, they're going to problem, problem, problem. Alright? The Most High is going to try us again as gold is tried in the fire. He's going to try us again. See? He might even, he might even have to bring us fruit from uh, heaven again. Might. Ain't going to be no meat out there. Ready? <laughs> so, yeah, it might be. You understand? They're going to be murmuring again. They're going to want meat. They're going to want this. They're going to want that. You know? Jake, right now, he's so comfortable living in an air-conditioned house, three, four-bedroom house, see? He's got it pretty good, right? What, running water, everything is nice, right? He can take a shower when he want, hot water, cold water, whatever, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, got food, good Lord, in his fridge, everything. He's living pretty good, right? Wait till we get to the <laughs> See? Then you'll see who's faithful or not. See? Now you can take out your phone, play your music, Got your beats, headphones, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got any type of music you want, wait till we get out in the wilderness. Nothing, brother. You have none of that. All that's gone. So here, this is us in the wilderness here. You remember we were living in Egypt. And in Egypt we had all the fine things. Remember, we were living in Goshen, so we were living pretty good until of course the burden of slavery came. But still, before that, we were living good. And some of our people are still living like that in Egypt. Even when the slavery came, some of our people, you know, they sold out to still live like that, just like today. Mm -hmm. Same difference. This is modern day Egypt, right? Right. So, yeah. So, you got a lot of our people that live good, man. Mm -hmm. So, it's the same deal. So, uh, the most of us are going to try it. Understand? And you're going to see who's faithful and who's, who's not faithful. See? A lot of people are going to be killed in the wilderness. They're going to make it out of America, but they're killed in the wilderness. Same thing coming out of Egypt. They made it out of Egypt. The killed in the wilderness. So here we are now in the Exodus 24 in the wilderness, and Moses is telling Moses, bring your you know Levite priest, high priest with you, and also bring the 70 elders with you up into the mount. But they could only go to a certain length uh, or, or measure uh, uh, a distance with Moses, and then they couldn't go anymore. So they stop. Moses, you come up, and the rest of them stay there. While the other people were down there, down in the mountain at the base. The leaders came up a certain length, and then they couldn't come up more. Then the most just wanted Moses to come the rest of the way. Right. So this is what he's saying now. Go ahead, Shunyah. Verse 2. And Moses alone <clears throat> shall come near the most high. Yes, yeah, only Moses alone. That's, that's, that's a special treatment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because Moses, uh, he had that quality that the most high loved in him, where he could bring him close to him. Uh, Moses was like almost next to Yahweh I would say it would be the Mosai, Yahweh and Moses. It was like on that level. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Moses was on that level, lot. Huh? Okay, go ahead, up. Huh? And Moses alone shall come near the Mosai, but they shall not come not. Neither shall the people go up with him. Yeah, 
Yeah, see? So, that, of course, the people couldn't go up and try to break the, break the ranks and go up with Moses to Mount. They would have got killed up. They don't stop. Let's say you got some simple nigga, I want to go up with Moses. Where you at, man? <laughs> Moses would have struck him with lightning right there. Remember, he killed Aaron's sons. Remember Aaron's sons got struck with uh, fire for offering the wrong incense? And they were priests up. They were high priests. Really? They offered the wrong incense. And I'm talking about in like a split second, the fire came down and consumed them. Wow. It's like they're quick. And those are Aaron's sons. Aaron probably said, what the heck? You know, it was just that quick, yeah. So, uh, and these were high priests. So imagine there's some old simple Negro out of the, you know, out of the congregation that's going to run up there. Most of them killed them right away. So, uh, you had to be, you had to be given that special privilege to come up and meet the Most High. Understand that everybody had that. Okay, go ahead up. Verse 3, And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Most High, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice, and said, All the words which the Most High has said, we will do. Now, what, what did the people just do? They just made a what? An agreement. They just made an agreement. We will do it. Understand? We will do it. Understand? Moses is telling the people, well, this is what the Mosai told me, and this is what he wants you to do. And everybody said, okay, Moses, we will do it. They just made an agreement. Come? Come. Okay, go ahead. Verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of the Mosai. He rose up early in the morning. So that's what Moses wrote all the words. When you read the book of Deuteronomy, what does Deuteronomy mean? And you know we're in Exodus, but what does Deuteronomy mean? All the words of Moses. That's what we the words that Moses spoke. Because what, what did Moses do when he got the word from Mosai? He had to write it down. He had to write it down. Because remember, it was going to become the book of the covenant. Right. He had to write it down. That's why Moses needed scribes. He needed, you know what I'm saying? Because he had a lot of work to do to write all that information down. All right? It was a lot of work. See? So we're going to need that again. Right. Like I said, we're going to need brothers who are talented. They're very talented. Skilled brothers. Most of them got them out there. That, that, they don't even know that they're going to be used for that purpose, but they're out there. Right? Or, or you're in here already. Come. Okay, okay go ahead, up. Huh? And Moses wrote all the words of the Most High and rose up early in the morning and built, built it an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, go ahead. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which, uh, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Most High. Right, so, okay, so he made 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. See how we're all together united in the wilderness? Well, that's going to happen again, huh? There's no way that Yahweh Shai is going to deal with us separate the way we are. It just doesn't make any sense. There's just no way. We have to come again. This is why. Uh, before some of your brothers came in, I was asking what they were going to go over, uh, either concerning Mount Zion or the Book of the Covenant, brothers from the Book of the Covenant. But we all got to come together, and guess where it's going to be at? In Mount Zion. Right. It's not going to be over here. Mount Zion in Jerusalem and Israel. You understand? Yeah. That's where the coming together of our people is going to be. That's where uh, the Mosai is going to bring us one again together with the land. Where the land is desolate over there now. The land's going to be, now when we get back over there, the land's going to be fulfilled where it's going to blossom. It's going to blossom with green grass, fruit trees. You're going to see where, where it was desert, now you're going to see grass, water, fruit, everything. You understand? It's going to blossom. Because we're not over there, so the land becomes desolate. Understand? So Esau is trying like hell over there to bring, import trees and fruit and everything. It's not working. Import water. There's no water, bro. How we know? Because we were over there. It don't rain but like twice, two or three times a year over there. So they got to import water. They got to extract it from somewhere else. Right. Do you understand? So it's desolate. So it's showing you that as a nation, we're together. Even come out of Egypt, we're together here as a nation. Twelve pillars, twelve tribes. So where are we at now in America? America is like a, a, a wilderness for us. You know what I'm saying? All right? So this is the area of our punishment. 
Right? This is not the area where we're going to come together. Okay? On small levels here, we come together. But on, on the major level, uh, when we're, being, we're going to be redeemed in Yahawashai, it's going to be over there in Mount Zion. All right? And that's why uh, the Mashiach will extract us from here and bring us over there. All right? And that's how, that's how it's going to happen like that. All right? And so we got to understand that. So over here, we could only just, uh, you know, come together in, in certain areas and certain measurements, all right, let's say as far as High Holy Day and so forth, but as far as the whole nation come together, it's not going to be here. America's going to be destroyed. It's going to be over there in Mount Zion, in Israel, okay? So, um, so 12 pillars representing 12 tribes, okay? And now read uh, the sixth version, yeah? Verse 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basin. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Run right now. It says that the young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings, remember, we had the sacrificial laws too, right? Most of was establishing the sacrificial laws also with Israel. All right? Which we know are done away with in Yahushua. But back here, all right? Uh, most has establishing sacrificial laws. Now, sacrificial laws are coming back. All right, they are coming back. All right, when we get, you know, we establish these 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 sacrificial laws are coming back on a certain level. All right, certain blood sacrifices and so forth, peace offerings, they're coming back. So you're still going to need uh, the understanding of what animals are sacrificed and so forth. All that's coming back. Okay, but on a more higher spiritual level, righteous level. Where we corrupted it back then, it's going to be on a righteous level this time. All right? And it says, uh, from those burnt offerings, Moses took half of the blood, see, and put it in basins. Now, you're going to see he's going to do something with this blood. All right? And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. See? Now we're going to get to understanding why he's going to sprinkle blood on the altar. Why he's going to take the blood from the offering and sprinkle it on the altar. So go ahead up. Verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Most High has said, we will do and be obedient. Right. So remember, he, they, he took the, the blood and the book of the covenant sprinkled it with blood, right? Because those burnt offerings were sacrifices. Understand? Then the people, remember, these are blood sacrifices now. Then the people said, okay, now we're going to agree to do what the Book of the Covenant says do. See? Because there's no, there's no redemption without what? Huh? Right. Without blood. It has to be bloodshed. So here the bloodshed is those animals that were sacrificed. Okay? That was back then. This time, the blood is going to be on who? It's going to be on the individuals okay? that are wicked, that are evil, that don't want to abide by the book of the covenant. See? Come? But showing you how everything was... Um, Everything was through or redeemed through blood. You understand? Even the Book of the Covenant. Moses took that blood and sprinkled on the Book of the Covenant. And the altar too. Now it's going to go further. Watch how the people are going to be sprinkled with blood too. This thing is, is a, a, a oxen that was sacrificed and they took the blood and put it on your head. You know, today, no. No, brother. See? Because that's that's gonna be that was the sacrifice for you to be redeemed. So don't run away from that. <laughs> Understand? Well back then if they did, you know I'm saying that, that would have been foolish. See? Okay, go ahead up. And but they did say, the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. The people said that. So what they just do, they just made a what? Covenant means what? Agreement. They just made an agreement that they would keep the commandments. That was us. Right. Yeah. See, that was us. We made that agreement. See? Uh, get Psalms 
50 and 5. Stay there, but get Psalms 50 and 5. Just to show you how important when you say that you're going to be obedient to the Most High's commandments, and you're talking about you want to be baptized. See, when you said you want to be baptized, which, remember, we did a class on that too. And we're saying there's nothing wrong with that. Brothers want to be baptized, okay. We went over there in, in Israel, we were baptized. You know, Jordan, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're saying you're going to be baptized, what are you saying? It's another what? It's another covenant agreement. <laughs> that you're going to keep the commandments, right? But you're saying you're being baptized in whose name? Mashiach, Yahweh name. Now what did he do for you? His blood was sacrificed. So you're still making the same agreement. You just don't need a, a, a bull or a goat or anything anymore. You're saying it in his name. And he, he sacrificed his blood on the cross. So when you say you're being baptized in his name, it's the same blood. You're still making the same agreement and pledge. So how are you going to say you're going to be baptized in your house child's name and go out here and do evil? You're still breaking the agreement. <laughs> you're still doing it. So that's why when, you, when brother says, I want to get baptized, I want to do this. Uh, yeah, but brother, do you know what that means? See? You're, held in, you're held in obedience to keep the whole law when you do that. So brothers got to be careful what they say what they're going to do. You understand? Understand? Just do the best you can do, but but do it in your house shy. How shy I know you're gonna sin already. It's not. It's not like I, you know. He already knows you're gonna sin. All right. But if you if you're in your house shy, you're gonna repent. You're gonna fall and you're gonna get back up and you're gonna repent. That's what your house shy wants to see. Understand? So you gotta understand. That. So um, they made this agreement. All right, to keep the commandments. Now read Psalms 15 and 5 real quick. Okay, go ahead, Ashra Khan. So now you stay with Exodus 24. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Right. See? Sacrifice. Well, you just read in Exodus 24 and, and uh, 5, where the young men of the children of Israel, which offered children, uh, Burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings, right? So now in 50 and 5, Psalms, he said, gather my saints. Who are the saints? Children of Israel. They're the only ones, we're the only nation that made a covenant with the Most High to keep, through blood sacrifice to keep the covenant. We're the only nation that ever did that. That's why the nations are jealous. Because the Most High took us to the side and say, I'm going to do this with you. The other nations, yeah, I have them, but I'm not going to do that with them. I'm not going to get close to them. I'll get close to you. See the difference? That's why they're jealous. That's why they're still killing you. They just killed Dr. Sebi. Yeah. They just killed Dr. Sebi. See? They killed him. The man didn't die in pneumonia and all that old bull crap. Understand? They're going to try to make you think that. They killed Dr. They're just coming out with the, with the AIDS cure. In Spain, they came out with the AIDS cure. I think, and uh, I think one of the colleges, Temple University or something, got the AIDS cure. So they can't have Dr. Sebi go out running around saying he cured AIDS 35 years ago mm -hmm. when they just now coming out with the AIDS cure. Do you understand? Right. So they had to say, we got to kill this man. They already knew he had it. They already knew. But it was time now because now they want to come to the AIDS cure because you're in the end now. So now they got to come out with these different. Um, uh, cures for diseases to deceive people, make people think, you know, oh, okay, they got an AIDS cure, technology and science is, is, is better than it ever was, how about that, see, to deceive you, understand, they've been had the cure, but they just, <laughs> right, so they can't have him walking around like that, see, because, you know, he'll get on YouTube and say, now, wait a minute, I cured AIDS back in 1980s. And they just talking about they the cure, so they don't want him on YouTube saying that. So they they did away with it. But of course, it's still the most side. You know what I'm saying? It was his time. It was the most side. So it was his time. So the most side had Esau do that. Understand? But he but he did show, he did show what? That if you apply the dietary law, you know what I'm saying? With the most side, 
that uh, what our people are suffering in, in diseases in America, it could all be cured. Just follow the dietary law, the herbs, right? And, and so forth. And take care of your body internally. See? But we're not doing it. This is why we're dying. We're dying every day. All right? So, and that's, that's because we're not following the book of the law, the covenants. Understand? So, this is where we're at. So, uh, read Psalms 50 and 5 one more time, Ashraka. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. See, the covenant made with the Most High by sacrifice. See, we sacrifice blood sacrifices to the Most High. We made this covenant. And here's where we're making it, right here. So when you go back to Exodus 24 and 8, now, Shania, I'm going to high level. See? See, so he sprinkled the book of the covenant and the altar with blood. Now it's going to go on a high level with that. Go ahead, Shania, 8 verse. This is chapter 24, verse 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. Ah! Now it goes on a higher level. He sprinkled it on the people themselves. This is the blood of, of these animals, right? He sprinkled blood. It's like we would take, you know, the olive oil and sprinkle your head, but that, but that it was blood. See? Because there's no redeeming without sacrifice, blood sacrifice. Somebody, something has to be, be the blood sacrifice. Something has to be the sacrifice, brother. And in these last days, it's not going to be the poor animals no more. It's going to be, it's going to be individuals. Remember, two-thirds of our people are not going to make it. A lot of our people are not going to make it. Especially the ones that you our people idolize and you see out there in the famous world, uh, a lot of them, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I have some um, scriptures in mind, if you can read um, um, Yeah, I'm not, not going to go into all the scriptures yet. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, but just, just keep them, just right, keep, right, yeah, right. okay, but it, that's good you have. Okay. okay, so he sprinkled the blood on all the, on the people, and go ahead, Chinyak. He sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant which the Most High have made with you concerning all these words. Right. See? Do you understand what that meant? There was a bond there. There was an agreement there. And it was made with blood. See, that's, that's why I remember the Gadites, the North American Indians, would make their covenants with blood. They'll take a feather. Okay. See? Now the covenant is it sticks. It's the bond. See? That's why brothers say, your word is your bond. And actually, if your word, when you say you're going to do something, you're supposed to do it. Really, without blood, you're supposed to be truthful and do what you say you're going to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Even though the Most High does everything through blood, because it's spiritual, uh, right? Because the Most High is a spirit. And, that, and to deal with the Most High, you must deal with them in what? Spirit and in truth. You understand? So that's why he does everything through blood. Because we're in the flesh, the most high is in the spiritual world. So he does everything through the blood. But still, with, with your brothers and with your sisters, all right, everything should be by your word, brother. Let your yay be yay. Do I got to go get an animal to sacrifice to, to make sure that you keep your word? I shouldn't have to do it. Should I? I shouldn't have to do it. <laughs> These days, man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I almost got to kidnap somebody in your family. Brother, you going to keep your word? <laughs> Let me hold your wife for a few months. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. But this is where we're at. So, so this, is, this is where the most I said, okay, with Israel, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm to I'm uh, establish these covenants through blood with you. All right? And so he sprinkled it on all the people. You had over a million some odd people uh, that Moses sprinkled blood on. Children too, everybody. Everybody. Huh? Yeah, the children may not understand, but still, <laughs> they're going to grow up, brother. They're going to grow up to be men and women. They're going to grow up. You understand? So that's why the scriptures tell you, uh, with these laws, statutes, and commandments, teach your children, right? And your children's children. Teach right. them. From, the, from, you know, small age. If they're one years old, teach them. See? And when they get two, they learn more. When they get three, See? When they get four, when they get five, now they're starting to comprehend. See? You teach them. See? So, 
This is what the Most High has shown us here. It was by blood. So go ahead, Shunyah, number 9, verse 9. Verse 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Adab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Most High of Israel. And there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. And as it were the body of heaven, his cleanness. And his clearness. clearness. Right. So they sing, and, and you read a lot of that in uh, Revelations also. All right. Uh, they sing. They sing the Most High on the throne. All right. This is what, how Moses is describing <clears throat> the divine spirit of the throne of the Most High. But to be able to see that, it was special. That was special. Nobody else seen that. No, no other nation. No all these other nations out here. They ain't seen nothing. They want to. They can. Only we were able to see that. And not everybody of Israel, you know, certain brothers. Mm -hmm. they, they seen the most high on his throne. See? Paved work of sapphire stone. Mm -hmm. And as it were, the body of heaven is clearance. Okay? So that that was that's the most high. The most high sits on the throne now. Most of us sits on the throne. He is, he is the ultimate judge. He sits on the throne. And then he has his angels all around him. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh Shai is right there. <laughs> and the angels. And the Most High tells Yahweh Shai what he wants. Boom, 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 boom. Yahweh Shai, okay, he, he gives a command to the next top angel, whatever. Maybe Michael, the archangel, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And it goes on. And then Michael gives his command to the rest of them. And then they go forward. So what if the most I say, okay, I want uh, I want an earthquake and uh, you know, just bring in the next earthquake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And your shy, you pick where you want to be at. <laughs> See? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then your house shy will get the command and it goes on down. Oh, it's like there's order up there. There's no order here. That's the problem. There's no order here. There's order up there. When you pray, those prayers come up. Your house shy grabs. Or the angels grab the prayer, bring it to your house shy, your house shy, and listen to the prayer. Oh, Lord! <laughs> Can you help me, Lord? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I just need some deliverance, man. Can you help me? <laughs> We're going to show you we don't know how to pray as we ought to pray, right? Yeah. That's, that's why it is. There's a formal way you're supposed to pray. That's why he told us. You know, Lord's Prayer, right? But Jake, he ain't listening. Man. Lord, just help me, man. Hey, man, can you help me? Hey, man, right? <laughs> he ain't saying, Lord, when, he, when Jake get critical, he really stressed out. Man, can you help me? Uh, my whole side, Lord, uh, whatever your name is, <laughs> God. <laughs> but if it's, if it's in the spirit, right spirit, out of faith, the most side will still answer it. Okay, he knows we don't know, you know what I'm saying? We don't know how to do things correctly. So out of faith, if it's, if it's in faith, Yahweh Shah would, would, would bring it to the Most High and say, look, Most High. Because the Most High don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Most High want to hear from Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah, this is what this is what the brother's trying to say. See? He's trying to say such and such and say, this is what he's trying to say. Then the Most High may say, okay, we can grant that prayer. Or otherwise, no. Kill that thing. <laughs> Kill him. Now. Well, it could be either way, right? Mm -hmm. oh, but, man. but it's the same thing like when you need a lawyer to go to go to court. Mm -hmm. It's the same difference because the, the, the lawyer will speak for you and will bring to the judge what you're trying to say. You know, have those certain words that the judge could understand, right? But you ain't gonna have no, you ain't gonna say anything to the judge. The judge don't really want to hear that. So, uh, but the, but where does Esau get that from? He gets it from us. See? And how the Most High conducts conducts um, how he judges things in the spiritual world. Yeah. Sit there, he's a judge. You understand? The ultimate judge. So it's the same difference. So they seen they seen the Most High on the throne. Now we I only read the twelfth verse, y'all. Exodus chapter 24, verse 12. And Mosiah said unto Moses, Come up me, come up to me into the mountain. Uh, read 11. Just read 11, then 12. Yeah. Verse 11. And upon the nobles 
of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw the Most High and did eat and drink. See? You understand? So the Most High gave uh, his, his, you know, his, his special permission or, or authority to Moses. All right. But then Moses, of course, chose those 70 elders, all right, to go down and deal with the people. But it says they seen the Mosai, all right? They seen the image of the Mosai on that throne, okay? And they didn't see the Mosai's face like that, but they seen the Mosai, you understand? This image and everything on that throne, all right? And did eat and drink, okay? Now read 12 verse. Verse 12. And Mosai said to Moses, come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and a commandment, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Right, so he said, the Most High told the Most come up to the mount, and I'm going to give you a law, and a commandment, which the Most High wrote. Okay, and as we know, he's, he's talking to Yahweh Shai here. See, but the Most High and Yahweh Shai wrote the Ten Commandments, brother. He wrote the Ten Commandments. See? That's why these Ten Commandments, Esau is looking for these Ten Commandments. He just, he's looking all over the world for these things. Man. Can't find them. Mm -hmm. They were hidden, they were hidden by Jeremiah. All right? But he's looking for these Ten Commandments, the Ark of the Covenant. He's looking for them. them. And he's so stupid because it, as soon as he get them, he's going to be put to death. He's so stupid. Right? <laughs> think most likely going to let him touch it? See? They showed you that the Raiders of the Lost Ark. The most I'm like, don't you touch it? No, he said, what are you looking for it for? Dummy. You know, but they haven't, they haven't found it yet. All right, but he's looking for these things. But um, most I wrote it with his own finger. And Moses was right there to see it. Right, right there to see it. Understand? So, um, so the rest of that, we ain't going to read the rest of that. But as Moses got the Ten Commandments, he came down the mountain. Because you can read the rest of the Canada Mountain. They said his face lit up. His face lit up with light. And it was so bright that when he came down and people seen him, they couldn't look at him. They couldn't look at Moses. Now Moses is on a, you know, he, Moses went from this level, that level, this level. Now Moses is up here. Remember, he's right next to Yahushai, right next to Yahushai on that level. You understand? Mosai. See? So, um, he's now coming down the mountain with the Ten Commandments, and his face is like with, a, uh, with an angelic brightness to it. The people couldn't look at him. So, Moses had to put a veil, to speak to the people, he had to put a veil over his face. That's how bright it was. And that not a high level, what is, not, uh, what is it? Because <laughs> he's right next to the Most High. He is, you know, you have a shot right in the Ten Commandments. Moses is right there. Yeah. Understand? Mm -hmm. So you can't get no closer to the most out of that. That's so uh, that, that's, that's that level. Get Exodus 34, 27. See? So that's a high level art. And that's the level that we have to come up. And keeping these commandments. Now we made that covenant in the wilderness. All right. And Exodus. Let's see who has that. Thirty-four twenty-seven. Go ahead. Who has that? Exodus chapter thirty-four verse twenty-seven. <clears throat> and the Most High said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant. With thee and with Israel. See? So he told Moses, write thou the words. See, it wasn't just, just the Ten Commandments. <laughs> it, was the, it was the Tanakh, brother. It was the Torah. You understand? It was the five first five books. Yeah. First five books. Torah, the Tanakh. That's a lot of work, brother. He needed scribes, he needed men to help him. Because Remember, when the Most High said Moses write these words, it wasn't just Moses just writing. It was, you know, the men that were with him had to help him write down what the Most High said. And the Most High gave Moses the memory and everything, to remember everything.
exactly the way the most I want exactly. Okay? Alright? So it says, write, right, write out these words for after the tenor. The tenor means what? Like the, the, the general meaning of how the most I convey to Moses the, the, the word, the command. The, the quality or general meaning of how. In other words, Moses had to write it exactly and gave the people the exact meaning how the most I wanted it conveyed so they can understand it. That's what tenor means. Understand? He couldn't deviate, you know, the most I said, that, you know, thou shalt not eat the, the swine. It couldn't be, okay, well, maybe in certain circumstances you can eat the swine. It couldn't be, you know, anything. It had to be exact. See, how the most I conveyed it to him. See? So, uh, go ahead, up. Uh, 28 verse. 28. And, he's, and he was there with the most I 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread. Not about that, huh? No bread, no work. So brothers say, I fast, and I did this, I did that. Yeah, but go 40 days. You'll kill yourself. No, we're talking about no water now. See? You can survive a pretty long, a long time without eating food, but without water? Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how the level he was on. Of course, the most side, you know the most side sustaining him. But still, no food or work for 40 days. Yeah, how much I did it to? Okay. For a lot, that's a long time, huh? That's over a month, right? Mm -hmm. See? I do one day and can't make it almost one day. <laughs> See? Uh, I've heard of a, a, I know one brother said he went 21 days. That was my shot. He told me he went 21 days. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but some people, you know, a lot of people can do like three or five days, you know what I'm saying? But water, you're definitely going to need. You understand? You're definitely going to need it. After about two days, three days, you're going to need some water. Right? You're going to be dehydrated. You're going to die. You're going to need some water. He went 40 days with no water. Awful, awful. It's a high level, isn't it? He's, he's like really on that level of almost like an angel at that point. You understand what I'm saying? So go ahead, up. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Right, see? He wrote the Ten Commandments, bro. Go ahead. Verse 29. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. Right, see? Man, it, it, it was light. The light that was around his face was really bright, right? Emanating off his, off his face, right? And it, people really couldn't look at him. That's how bright it was. Go ahead, up. Verse 31. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron, and all the rulers of the congregation, returned unto him. And Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh. And he gave them in commandment all that the Most High had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Okay, so he gave to them in commandment. Gave them the commandment, all that the Most High had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. See? So, because this was the um, the book of the covenant, the agreement that we made um, with the Mosai and Yahweh Shai, that we would keep his law, statute, and commandments. This is the agreement. Go ahead, up. Thirty-three. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. So he had to put a veil over his face, right? Because of the brightness of it. Go ahead, up. But when Moses went in before the Mosai to speak with him. He took the bell off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Right. Okay. Go ahead. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the bell upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Right. So let's think about that, how bright that light is around you, that you got to put a veil over your face. 
Yeah. Who's gonna it, it, you know, think about it? They're in darkness. There's no street lights or nothing yeah. like that. So it's just light coming from. Yeah. Yeah. But we're, but we're talking about during the day also. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. During the day also. Yeah. You can see the light emanating from his face even during the day. That's how bright the light was even during the day. And of course, and of course, at night, but still. See? Yeah. All right. And look, if an angel came out of the heavens right now, and it's 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 noon time and the sun's out and everything, that light is still brighter than you know what I'm saying than the daytime, than the than the light you see outside. It's still brighter than that. All right. So Moses, that light on him was on that level. It was bright. Okay. And, okay, so now we're going to get Deuteronomy 4th chapter and the 12th verse. Deuteronomy 4 and 12. Okay, read that right quick. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, uh -huh. verse 12. And most I spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the word, but saw no similitude, only ye heard the voice. Right. So this is what uh, the most I is showing. This is what Moses is trying is showing the people. The most I spoke to you out of the fire. There was no similitude. So why are you building idol gods? You didn't even see the shape of the mold. You didn't see nothing. All you seen was fire. So why are you building idol gods? That's what he's trying to tell the people. You saw no similitude. You saw no shape of anybody, anything. So why are you, you know, building a, a idol gods out here in the wilderness? So Moses saying, be careful because you didn't see no similitude of the most side. See? So be careful what you do. See? All you did was hear what? The word of the Most High, his voice. It's all you heard. Okay, go ahead, up. Verse 13. He declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. See? Performance of the law. See? That's what's missing here, the performance of the law. So when we begin to perform that which we're supposed to perform, which is in the commandment, see? then you'll be getting... Uh, that redemptive quality that the Most High is looking for, you see? But because we don't perform the commandment, see, we fall off. This is why the Most High is doing what he's doing. He said, I, I, will, I will redeem you, one from a city and two from a family. See? This is what he's saying. Because some of our people are not redeemable. You're going to leave them behind. They're not redeemable. So, I'm, you know, I was trying to say, I'm one from that family, that's all I want. But that could be 10, 20 people, siblings in the family, right? Right? Some families are big, right? No, all I want is that. The rest, I don't care what happens. This is what you have to say. I don't care. That's it. Because they're not redeemable. For some of our people, it's better that they be, you know, put to death and then come back in the reincarnation to, to be fully. Uh, to be fully qualified to go, you know, learn the law, statute, commandments, and then perform it. Right now, it's like there's nothing you can do with it. Because in some of these families that and settled out to Satan, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They drunk blood, sacrificed their kids, you know what I'm saying? They, they, idol worship, transgender, got an operation to change their, you know, sexual, uh, uh, you know, their gender. So what are you going to do with that? So y'all should say, nothing I can do with that. I just want the one day. That's all I want. The rest, and that's what's going to happen out there. Understand? So uh, that's why he's saying that. So the, the performance of the law is very important. Okay? Okay, go ahead, Shinya. Even what? Even the Ten Commandments. Even the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Okay, even the Ten Commandments, okay, even the Ten Commandments, which he wrote himself on two tables of stone, right? That's the Mashiach Yahweh Now get 
Psalms 132 and 12 real quick. Ashra Kwa. Get Psalm 78 and 5. Real quick. Who got 132 and 12? Okay, go ahead, Shinya, read that. Psalms chapter 132, verse 12. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony. See, if thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, everything is based off keeping the covenant of the Most High. Which is what? Keeping the agreement. See, if, if you go to Esau's, one of his um, banks, and you ask for, you know, $10,000, he's going to establish an agreement with you, a, co a covenant. He's going to establish an agreement that you pay back such and such and such. And we know it's wicked as hell. And we know they're going to use usury, you know what I'm saying, try to uh, charge you over the interest what he's uh, supposed to. We know that. But still, it's the same, you know, same difference. If you don't keep that agreement, and if you're supposed to pay back $100 a month, $200 a month, but you start falling off and you start paying $10 a month, then you, well, your agreement says this. You didn't keep the agreement, see? Then that's why he charged you late fees and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you get back too far, too much, he does what? He come back and repossess or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or put it on your uh, debt collection thing or on your credit, and mention credit, see? Because you didn't keep the agreement. So, if you don't keep the agreement with the Most High, the covenant, what does the Most High got to do? See, there's something he got to do, doesn't it? Because he's the creator of heaven and earth. And he, he made you his chosen, gave you a land flowing with milk and honey, you know what I'm saying? Gave you a spirit better than all the other nations, right? Blessed you. So, if you don't keep his agreement and his covenant, so what's he got to do now? There has to be something. So it's the same difference that, you know, you have your children, you have two, three, four, five children, and they and you set the rules in your house. You set them. That's your house. You set the rules. Now, if, and you tell your children the rules. Now, if they and they say, okay, Dad, we'll do that. And now, if they break that agreement, uh oh. Now, now, what do I got to do? That means when you set the rules, you also have to set up what. A consequence for breaking the rules. And that's what the most I had to do. He had to do the same thing. You always got to set rules and consequences for breaking the rules. You're going to do the same thing in your house, brother. Don't tell me you don't do it. I know you do. Otherwise, you have chaos in your house. You will have chaos. It's inevitable. So don't tell me you have two, three, four, five children and you don't set some kind of rule and, and you don't tell your children, well, if you don't do it, I'm a spanker. You gonna tell me? You gonna tell them something? See? So the most I is saying the same thing because we read, read the scriptures. See? Read the scriptures. The most I tell you, if if you keep my covenant, you'll be blessed in all lands. If you break my covenant, he says, then this is what I'm gonna do to you. See, the same thing. See? So so you gonna understand? This is where we're at. Okay, go ahead up. Twelve verse again. If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. See, see, see the condition? There's always a condition to uh, Most High's Law, Statute, and Commandments. The covenant is always a condition to it. If you keep the covenant, this is what the Most High would do for you. If you break the 